some ways to keep your stress levels lower as an artist. So what are some examples of that? Well, one example would be in your diet. Make sure you're eating enough of the foods to give you the proper nutrients and everything so that you feel well enough and make sure you're not eating a lot of junk food. Um, a second example would be getting enough sleep. Make sure you're sleeping enough so that you, know, you can use your mind to be creative. And I, I know that when I don't have enough sleep, I don't feel as creative and my, my drawing doesn't improve. And I really get to the point where I feel like I've uh, really plateaued to where my drawing doesn't get any better. Number three would be not overworking yourself. Know what your limitations are and don't try to overwork to where you're trying to go past that because then you'll start losing sleep and you just won't feel as well. Number four, don't take criticisms from others or from other artists about your artwork. Don't take it so serious. I mean, sure people can give you some you know, advice and things that you can improve on, but don't take it so serious to where you think that what they're saying is trying to cut you down and make you feel bad as a person or as an artist. Number five is not being lazy. And this is also related to overworking. You don't want to overwork, but you also don't want to underwork. You know, the obvious, if you're just being lazy and not trying, then you're just never going to improve. And to prevent yourself from being lazy, a lot of that can happen from a lack of sleep, not eating right, and just generally not feeling well from how you've been overworking and treating your body and your mind. You have to treat all that well and balanced. You have to have, you don't want too much of anything that's good. Um, too much of anything is bad for you. So make sure that you're working on those and that'll help you be more inspired as an artist. It'll help you with being more creative to, um, you know, improve your drawing, to make more expressive art, you know, whatever it is that you're doing and whatever style it is. So make sure you're not underworking. Look at other people's artwork and see how they make things. This would be a sixth example. Um, see how they do it, see how they draw, see what their drawing style is like. Maybe you can gain inspiration from them to use that for your drawing to improve. And when you see other people's work, don't see it as um, trying to compare yourself to them because there's always going to be people out there that's really good at something and then you don't want to compare yourself with them and think that you know I'm never going to be that good there's no way that I'm going to do that because we all have to start somewhere and just because you're not there yet doesn't mean you won't get there just try to be the best that you can be tip number seven for this I would say would be not getting involved with people that are very negative and just want to bring you down and criticize you in bad ways to try to make them feel, make themselves feel better about who they are um, there's always going to be people out there that are always very um, ungrateful, very unhappy. And you can't let that prevent you from being the person that you are. You can't let it prevent you from expressing yourself as an artist. And removing the people from your life that don't add any value to it, that aren't going to help you be more productive as an artist, um, they're just going to drag you down. You want to avo avoid those people. and. When you're around people like that, it, they're always negative. That's going to implant a lot of negative thoughts in your mind. And then you're going to start thinking negatively about what you're doing. And you're going to think that, you know, I can't improve. And it's going to spiral out of control from there. There are times where I listen to music and there's times when I don't. If I'm really focused on the drawing, I'm trying to get all the gestures and all the proportions right, I won't be listening to music because um, I'm so focused on that that I just, I don't, I don't even hear the music really. I'm just, uh... I kind of just cancel that out. But to get inspired and to feel more motivated, I would say just put on some of your favorite music. It doesn't really matter what kind it is because I've been asked, um, you know, what type of music I listen to when I'm drawing. And it, it varies greatly. I mean, it just depends on what I'm doing for that day, really. Um, whatever it is that you like, um, just put on some music, listen to it, and if that helps inspire you and gives you motivation to do more, um, depending on the song, what they may be talking about in the song, or the rhythm or the beat of it. 
that can influence your creativity, especially if you're doing um, you know, fast painting like with watercolors or with an acrylic where you're doing abstract drawing, that the music and the rhythm of it is going to influence what you're making. Tip number nine would be jealousy. If you're jealous of another artist and you don't think you're going to be as good as them just because maybe they have some talent that you don't have or maybe they can you know, paint or draw in ways that you can't, don't use that jealousy in a way to give up. Um, I think that there are different forms of jealousy, and if you really, I mean, if you really think about it, it wouldn't really even be jealousy. Then it would be, um, you know, a different word. It would more so be aspirations and um, desires to to be like what they're creating. And so, I, I see other artists, and I see some of the works from the old masters, like Leonardo da Vinci and uh, Michelangelo. And when I see the work, it really makes me want to improve what I'm doing and to try to be able to draw and paint like that. And I see a lot of people that get really discouraged when they see an artist that's you know, making something that's really detailed and really good and they're making a lot of money from it. And don't use the jealousy to, um, in a negative way to prevent yourself from improving. As far as to learn from what they're doing and how they're doing things because like I've said before we always had to start from somewhere to get where we're at and we all can't all just you know, start out at a, you know, a master level at what we're doing and so make sure you're not jealous of others and what they're doing because we've all got our own strengths and weaknesses and we just have to work in the ones that we might not be as good at and to just be happy with who we are as a person and my tenth tip, which is also related to tip number nine, would be to just accept yourself. Just accept that maybe you don't have the talent someone else has. Maybe you'll never be as good as them, but then again, that depends on what you define as good. Um, what someone might be good at, there is something that you might be good at. And just because you have a hobby or something that you're doing, you're not making you know, a lot of money from it doesn't mean you shouldn't that that you shouldn't try to pursue that and I think a lot of times in life and you know especially now in society people get so caught up in the idea of trying to just make money and you know trying to try to trying to be somebody because the whole time that you're trying to search for that person that you want to be and you get there and you're lost you don't even know who you are because you've been searching the whole time and then you look back and you can't really reflect on those experiences you had because you're just only thinking about the future. And then when you get there, you, you, you have nothing to think about because you're not worrying about what's going on in the moment. If all you think about is either what's way in the past, what's way in the future, that's going to affect your thinking. You probably be, might be negative all the time. And then you're just not going to be happy and you can't appreciate what you have at that moment. And accepting who you are would also be involved with the idea of you know appreciating what you have and we all didn't come from you know a family or background and everything where you had a lot of money or you had you know both your parents there or whatever it is we've all had our own things that we've had to overcome in life and whatever it is that you're working on and whoever um, you are as a person don't let your past and any mistakes you've made in life completely define your entire future you can learn from your past and build on that, but don't give up just because you've had a couple of times where things weren't working out well, or maybe sometimes that people are saying mean things to you. And I think that sometimes when people are mean to you and they, they try, might try to say hurtful things, just realize that maybe they're in a situation in life to where they have a lot of bad things going on and they're not really able to... to to think differently because they have so much going on and when people are like that to me I I don't um, try to seek you know, revenge on them I don't try to uh, try to put them down I just I I just move on from the situation I don't put too much emphasis and thought on you know when people are really negative towards me I just keep doing what I do and I um, you know, if I enjoy it that's really important to me but if you can find something that you enjoy and you can make money from it and it's a hobby and it really gives you a purpose in life and you keep pursuing that then I guarantee that you'll be happy with who you are and just keep moving forward from there and 
don't give up just because other people don't appreciate who you are and you know sometimes in life we try to aspire to be a certain person or maybe um, we want to be remembered as a type of person that you know when we get to old age we can look back and say that we're proud of who we are but sometimes we have to just relax a little bit and appreciate what's going on in our life and what we have at the moment so just be happy with who you are and for now those are the 10 tips I have for lowering your stress and helping you as an artist so I'll catch you around next time and uh, hope you enjoyed the video have a good day